cool to get to have two people that are on your staff serve as head coaches in the spring game. This is the black team coach, Larry Waters, director of football equipment and apparel operations. He's done a great job here in Columbia, worked at Alabama and at Mississippi State, and is now at the Gamecocks. And did you see who was talking to him when we were in commercial there, Stitch? Sean Elliott is back with the program. Tight ends and running game. Run game coordinator, worked with Coach Furrier, just like Coach Beamer did. Went and was the head coach at Georgia State for a few years. Former O-line coach here in South Carolina. Ran his own ship down there in Atlanta for Georgia State, now back. He speaks well of Coach Beamer's program in this town. Guys will want to come back here and coach when they get an opportunity. This is Attaway. We've seen a lot of him in the first half, and he gets past the 40 up near the 44-yard line with Matt Stinchko and Shane Beamer on Taylor Zarzer as the Gamecocks get ready. There's Coach Elliott over on the sidelines. Know you love having him back, Coach Beamer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just the experience they have. Uh, Sean's a guy that loves his place, has head coaching experience. Certainly will help with our run game. we got to run the ball better, and he'll help with that, coaching our tight ends. And really like the group that we have. Mike Furry is a former head coach. He's in now um, as our as our receivers coach. And added a veteran like Joe DiCamillas. Added a veteran running backs coach and Mark Love Lockwell. Added a veteran coach, period, and Mike Shula, the former Alabama head coach, is working on our staff now as an analyst and doing a heck of a job helping our offense. So couldn't be more excited. I feel like our team's in a better place than what they were in November and because of the players we brought in. Welcome back to the williams Bryce so Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Good half of football that Norris Sellis is playing through these first couple of drives. Stench is three for three on third down. Found four different receivers. I know that the Sixers are um, first down. Plenty of time here. Uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> okay. Flag down. He was over there just hopping right. Can't believe that's lobbying Coach Beamer. Say it again. I heard the oh. band is playing in the background. He's you, Taylor was mentioned in the Notre Dame game. Boogie just told me, I know you remember that play I had against Notre Dame. Where he, 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 he took him out of field goal range. He made an unbelievable effort play that I always show our defense about playing with great effort. And he's like, I know you remember that play. That's what I would have done right there. But no disrespect to, uh, I think it's Ian Book. No disrespect to Ian Book, but uh, I've seen Lenores get out of that sack. First a lot of times and here. 20. Ooh. Yeah, I got I know. I'm wondering if Boogie, does Boogie have the, does he have the earpiece in for the broadcast? Yeah, and then one of the linebackers right. has the, he's has play. He's doing more talking than he has playing. I'll, I'll take care of him here in a minute. <laughs> the school colors are Jonathan and Black. Sellers throws behind the line. It's caught by Gage Lavardan, who comes in from Miami of Ohio. Hit it record 99 yard touchdown reception last year and made a real difference for the Red Hawks in their program. I know you're looking for depth at receiver, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we lose a fantastic player in person and Xavier will get. Um, so to increase, increase the depth in that room, we had to... Uh, had to go in there and attack the portal. We brought in some freshmen. You just mentioned Mazio Bennett. And then the transfers that we brought in, led by Gage. They're, they're guys that have been really, really productive at the schools they're coming from. How about that range from Dylan Stewart, a true freshman on that play? I mean, we're talking about negligible yardage. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Whistle dead, number six, Dylan Stewart, true freshman. Full start. Full start. Number 76. Five yard penalty, second down. For Torso okay. Simpkins, here at right guard, a little bit early. And of course, the D linemen are always very helpful, they're happy to point that out. <laughs> it is 7 36. You have some yeah. flashbacks right now? Yeah, I'm starting to twitch. Uh, it's a PTSD, these D linemen up there just talking about, oh, that guy flinched. One about one year ago. Yeah. He goes to Braswell. And he comes close to the 40-yard line. Coach, one guy we're not going to see tonight, but we will see in the fall, is Raheem Rocket Sanders, the transfer from Arkansas. Of course, played for Coach Loggins when he was with the Razorbacks. What does Rocket bring to your program? Well, he's in there coaching up right now, but that's 
that's a big thing to remember, Stinch, about yeah. the season is you have Raheem Rocket Sanders coming in. You got Juju McDowell that's back. He's not here tonight. What do you think about? You know, she got that run element, a legitimate run threat at all times at quarterback, regardless of who ends up winning out on that battle. Any talent like Raheem Sanders in the backfield. On third and 23, Sellers gets rid of it. It's incomplete. He's trying to find Jared Brown. Another transfer comes in from. We are an SEC never plus, but I know our team is in the SEC conference. Make the play coming over. Another new face. We talk about the passing battery, the impact it can have on the on the run game with this element. That's a play that Brown could have, should have come up with that catch. First incompletion of the game for Lenora Sellers. And Kroger with another cannon of a punt. Just rolls into the end zone, the 62-yard punt on a beautiful night in Columbia, South Carolina for the Garnet and Black game. We'll be right back here with more fun after this message. We'll be right back here. <laughs> 